Welcome to Vibrant Living Conversations. I'm your host, Gemma Putty. As a life coach to midlife women, I'm excited to bring you tools, tips, and local experts to help you ditch the autopilot living by stepping into your true power, who you are, what matters to you, and how you want to dance through this life. Root to crown. Hello. I wanted to hop on here now that I'm entering this new chapter of my business. I'm really supporting women as a life coach, ditch the autopilot living. Ditch the autopilot living. How freeing does that sound, right? By getting to know more who you are, what matters to you, and how you want to dance through this life. So as a part of that, I'm rebranding the podcast and adding episodes with tips, tricks, resources that I have learned on my journey to support you on this path. And of course, still having the community members that I am interviewing once a month and bringing their resources, their magic and wisdom to the podcast as well, and that community connection as well. So today, I'm bringing to you a little bit about me, but also through this framework of the chakras, which I talk a little bit about here and there, but I've been obsessed with them for the last several years, very similarly to the time when I started yoga the chakras entered my world as this framework to really live life by, to see this human journey by from root to crown. The chakras really represent this growth and evolution from when we are first in utero and the root chakra starts forming through the development up to the crown when we're about 20. And then they start all over again as we're in adulthood And of course, during each of those times, there's times where our chakras are more active, less active, underactive. That's the balance and the joy of life. But it's this framework in what they represent that I love in seeing how a holistic life is lived and making sure that we are balanced in the earth, but all the way up to a higher power as well. So the chakras come from. They were first mentioned anyway in Hindu scriptures back a bazillion years ago. And that was their introduction to the same thing, representing the organs and how the organs are healthy or not healthy, how the body is just healthy as a whole. So I am simplifying it very much as the framework right now of how I'm life coaching and seeing these different areas of our lives and whether they are being fulfilled or not fulfilled and how we're showing up in each one of them. So a little bit as we dive in, you're going to get a little bit overview of the chakras, these seven energy centers along our spine from root to crown, and you're going to get a little bit of an instruction about myself as well. So with the root chakra, this is the base of our spine. Muladhara is what it's called in Sanskrit. And it is about our upbringing as a child, the base, our tribe as it was back in the day, our people, and how that's shaped who we are. Also our connection to our physical body, this temple and home that we get to live this life in, and our connection to Mother Earth, our grounding on her. So I was born in Chester, England, I lived there until I was 11. And then of all places, we moved to Kansas for my dad's job. So my traditions and upbringing comes from a very British background. And then that change that shifted when I was about 11 and I've been raised the rest of my life in the United States. And now we, my family is all living here in North Idaho. I have two brothers and my parents and we're very close, tight knit. And then the family that I've been growing with, Mark, my husband, over the last couple of years, I have a son who is three and a half, and then I have a daughter who is just over four months. So those are my people. Those are what I come home to, and it lights me up so much. Then in my physical body, this relationship with myself has grown so much and become so much more nurturing in the last decade. I love to run. I love to do yoga. I love to dance. My dancing is very much a workout video by Dancing with the Stars, which is just fun and silly and lets me follow their leads and feel into my feminine energy, 
yoga, I really like to do the feminine flows of Boho Beautiful on YouTube. And I also like Brett Larkin, who brings in very structured and educational yoga from chakra yoga to detox yoga, doing those twists. Just, I love doing detox yoga. And can, that's just the ways that I like to connect with my body. I also love to put face masks on and nurture myself in that way. It feels very like spa-like to put on a face mask or to get in the bath and have Epsom salts just soak my body. So I love connecting with my physical home that way. And then connecting with the planet and Mother Earth. I am obsessed with North Idaho. This is where I'm meant to be because there's so many trees and there's so much water. Like going out and hiking amongst the trees and all this green, lush nature, and then having all of the lakes, just being around the flowing energy of water. Again, just as nourishment to my soul. So that is me. I love being rooted in the earth, in my body, and with my awesome family. So the sacral chakra is the next one up. And this one is about creativity, passion, and feelings. So for me, I am just a passionate person. I get excited about things. I use the word excited probably way too much. But this is, well, I started using Magical Mondays as a hashtag on my Instagram recently. And this is the epitome of this one for me, is finding small pleasures childlike joy and keeping the fun in the day-to-day, -day, creating rituals out of things with my crystals, with essential oils, like the senses of it all, bringing the smells, the tastes, the sounds, whether it's meditation bowls or smudge sticks, that is all really keeps that sacral flowing for me and helps me process feelings and emotions in my body. On another level with the sacral, it's dressing myself in clothes and jewelry that feels beautiful and brings joy to me on a day-to-day -day basis and enhances that creativity and expression of who I am in this physical body. So the next one is the solar plexus. The solar plexus is about your confidence, your self-esteem, your willpower in the world and your relationship to the world. How this developed for me was by taking crazy amounts of personality tests from human design, strengths finder, Ayurvedic doshas, the Chinese medicine elements, knowing who my friend's character is, what dog I am, understanding through these frameworks, seeing my strengths, my personality quirks, who I am when I wasn't in my most confident times, allowed me to look at myself and see that I'm a unique being. We're all unique beings, but instead of looking to myself and being by the world standards, I should be more this way, or I should be more that way, or I should be fitting more into this box. These personality quizzes, tests allowed me to see my strengths for me. This is what I have been gifted with to dance through this life with. So that's where I can step into my own power and live from my own truth rather than outsourcing my power and trying to mold myself to a world that doesn't make me feel good in who I am. So that's the solar plexus. And I love that one. The next one is the heart. So the heart chakra is all about loving and being loved. So for me, I love loving. I'm a gusher. Like I said, I love being passionate and I love gushing about things. I just get excited and I just want to see the beauty and I do see the beauty in so much. But the heart chakra really opened for me on so many levels when I had my son. So about three and a half years ago when I was loving him in this whole new way that I didn't even know was possible. But it also gave me an opportunity to be loved and nurtured in a new way. And I was in the space at that point to open and be in that vulnerable position, which in my earlier years, I hadn't. I had been very much rushing to be productive and successful. And I put walls up against other people and against receiving love and nurturance because I was on my own path and I didn't need anyone else. So it's very recent to me of being in this space of love, giving love and receiving love. And it has 
enhanced my ability to be in my feminine flow and to feel calmness and peace and connectedness to higher powers, to family, to loved ones in this whole new way. I'm getting chills even talking about it. I love it so much. And the heart chakra is so powerful in another way that it's connecting the three lower, more grounding chakras, the ones that are connected to the physical world, to our physical body and our outward life, to the three higher chakras, which are more about intellectual and higher connection. So the heart is that pinnacle in the middle that brings all of it together. So the next one is the throat chakra, which is about self-expression and communication. And it's very much about self-expression in, okay, now we've figured out who you are in the world and how you're able to love and be loved, but then how does that, your uniquenesses, be expressed to the world as you starting to serve your purpose and mission in this life? So for me, it was when I started to podcast and I stepped into being a life coach and creating this business that allows me to be creative and bring my ideas to the world and realizing how I like to do that. I love graphic design. That's always been a passion of mine in multiple parts of some of my prior jobs and being able to translate complex ideas into visual graphics that I think are beautiful makes me really happy. And then podcasting, talking to people and sharing ideas. And this element is a whole new way of me really tapping into my throat and using my own voice to come to you and share these ideas that are spinning around in my head and my body and have shaped the woman that I've become and this life that I'm just really enjoying dancing through. So the next one is the third eye, Ajna, the brow chakra, which is very much about intuition, but also about intellectual growth. So intuition is that piece of listening to your inner guidance. For me, when I connected to my intuition, these ideas, I almost feel like they drop in to me. So I'm doing yoga or I'm out for a run or a walk and an idea or a answer to a question that I've been thinking about just kind of drops in and I'm like, ah, yes, of course. So with the podcast, I had just been getting this feeling over and over again, like just start it, just start it, just start it. And I was pushing back for a number of reasons, but then I started it and it's opened up this whole journey for me of creativity, of connecting with local community members, with people who are on this path like me to their life purpose in a holistic, healthy, more Eastern way of living, which has been so fun. So listening to that intuitive hit and then following it has just opened so many doors on the path that I now know that I'm meant to be on. On the intellectual side, for me, personal growth has just always been a passion of mine. I'm always just so curious about the world and I want to know more about people and what makes people tick and other ways of living. So for travel, world travel, world cooking, ways of bring, bringing other perspectives into my life so I can appreciate them, but also understand and just broaden my horizons of what is possible in the world. Other things, growth things for me right now are Reiki. I've been training in Reiki for a while and I, I continue to advance that. Kundalini yoga is a passion of mine and the deep intensive breath work and movements that go with Kundalini are intellectually expanding me in whole new ways. So that's just a few of them on the Ajna third eye. Oh, and the other piece is the ability to see the vision for your future. Suddenly gaining this clarity on what you're here for and how you can share your passions and having this vision for your future in a whole new way. Not cer I certainly don't have the answers, but I just have this clarity and deep knowing that this is what I want to be doing. This is the life I want to be designing. This is how I want to be showing up in the world. And I feel very aligned and at peace and calm about that as well. And then the finally, the crown chakra is this beautiful connection to oneness that we're all a part of. 
and just knowing that I am being supported and guided on a much higher level than I fully even comprehend is just a beautiful thing. So that's me in a nutshell through the lens of the chakras. Now the podcast will still be available and you can find it on any podcast platform. Of course, you can also watch it on my YouTube channel. And the best way to find me in general is on my website, which is jemmaputty.com. That's G-E-M-M-A, putty, P-U-D-D-Y dot com. So thank you for listening today. And I look forward to many more times together. Take care. If you like this podcast, I want to invite you to coach with me. Let's ditch the autopilot living to slow down, tune in, reset, and redesign your life to glow from the inside out based on the beautiful being who you are, what matters to you, and how you want to dance through this life. I help you understand your self-sabotaging ways, program thinking, and tendencies to outsource your power and reshape them to align with the true you for this chapter of your life. To join me in a complimentary coaching session, go to my website, www.gemmaputty.com. Sending all the love, light, and vibrancy until next time.